Okay, so this is my review of Servant Season 2, Episode 2, Spaceman. This episode is the first episode that isn't just written by Tony Baskeloff, the showrunner creator. He co-writes it with Nina Braddock here. And like episode one, this is directed by Julia Ducournau. Now, what I love about this show is that somehow still in season two, it's mostly just shot inside of this house and they're still making the story work with that effect. And there's always more than meets the eye here. Yes, each episode is short, but they're giving you a lot to just digest per shot. I actually prefer it half hour than an hour because it is so many layers to it. So what's really interesting is the opening shot of this episode, Julian is laying in Leanne's room in her bed. And I like how they frame it where his head is lined up with the tigers facing him. Like they're gonna pounce on him, which I thought was really interesting. But in this same sequence, he looks now at the hole in the wall where Sean had placed that camera to watch Leanne. Now, what this episode is hinting at is that Leanne is in this house or is from afar doing some kind of voodoo, but she's got her eye on them. And I think this is hinting that Leanne might have at one point figured out Sean was filming her and set up her own camera or is put a new camera in there and is watching Julian right there. Obviously, she definitely turned this bathtub on that Julian's like, Dorothy, did you put the water on because later in the episode we see Leanne's controlling the shower with Dorothy's in. On top of that Julian hears a baby crying and it's cut to make it seem like it's the baby crying on the television that is old footage of Jericho but I don't think that's actually what's happening. I think that is Jericho and that he did hear the baby and you think this episode answers the question this debate we've had of is Leanne reviving this baby doll to turn it into Jericho or did she actually bring in a different baby and then take that baby with her. But you think this episode answers that, but it's really not. It's actually adding more to the mystery of it, which I'll delve into as the episode goes on. So this spacesuit comes into Dorothy that was a gift from Julian that was supposed to be for the day of the baptism. This will lead into the theme with Julian's character here that he goes on the speech about always wanting to go to space and that there's this wall he imagined or he just wanted to knock on, but it's not really there, which, Again, at some point in his early childhood, he was someone who was a believer and a dreamer, but he's complete opposite now. He's a total skeptic, and as Dorothy calls him an atheist, it really kind of sheds more light onto that and his character here, but it's setting up some sort of transformation for him as Natalie says to him. He needs to believe in something, even if it's stupid, to help him because she says she's tried so many things, and like she says, even acid and nothing works. He is so pessimistic. Where we've seen Sean now slowly already transforming and there's going to be a long game here with Julian. He's the most stubborn, which makes it really interesting because I really do think they're setting up these characters to face this cult at some point and who's going to kind of convert and who's not. But going back to what's going on with this doll here, we have that Dorothy sitting on the couch with Julian. She says, my stomach is tight. That always happens when Jericho cries. So this is literally said right after we heard the baby crying, which we think is on the TV, but actually with this line makes me think it's not. And she even says, I can feel him. I love in this scene that it has an overhead shot, just adding to the beautiful cinematography of this show. I really thought this stood out because it was like Dorothy in a fetal position in the womb with her brother here. And they've shaped the couch so beautifully to represent that. Now, a little thing I wasn't crazy about was when Julian goes to put the spacesuit on the doll here. It's the first time we see the doll in the episode. We just saw him throw this doll out last episode. So I wanted some kind of clarification to his reaction to seeing the doll back. It wasn't really there. He wasn't even like acknowledging that. It was just like, oh, it's here. We need some kind of moment maybe where he addresses Sean about it. Like, what's that doll doing back? I threw it out. That just did not make sense to me that we didn't get to see that and that he's just fine with it sitting right there. Now, Roscoe, we see wakes up back in his car. So he was put back there by the cult. He had left, we find out. He doesn't remember what happened the past four days since he last saw Aunt May there. Now it is interesting, obviously this is probably me looking way too much into it, but when Roscoe knocks on the door and Sean answers, the shot of Roscoe, his torso was cut off. I don't know if that's some kind of physical foreshadowing of maybe he gets chopped in half at some point, but it was a really specific, powerful shot. So I feel like there's more meaning to that. But you see Sean and Julian get Natalie over here as a Hail Mary to hypnotize Roscoe to figure out where he was 
and you see Julian's skeptical at first. And what's interesting is when the hypnotizing happens, he breaks a bit here, especially when he says a line that they take the baby's eyes out. But then he goes back into Julian denial mode and is like, oh, he's just having a hallucination. So that was written really well to fit this theme about learning about Julian even more as a character and how he needs to change his skeptic ways. But shout out to the actor who plays Roscoe. He did a great job here. It seems like this are usually tough for actors because you feel like you're looking like an idiot or you're doing this right, being hypnotized. But I think he really did it really well and let himself fully get into it. But you're getting a visual now of one of their rituals with the baby. Now, back to what we're talking about with this baby here. We do not know if the baby he's talking about here is Jericho. And why I don't think it is Jericho is because I don't think they've taken Jericho's eyes out yet. I think they're doing this with another baby they have. Like it's a red herring for us as the audience and for Julian and Sean. But we're learning about this leader here who has a hook supposedly. And they're all bleeding in front of this leader and he's the one who takes the eye out of this baby. So it's gonna be interesting. We're getting introduced slowly to a new character here. Now, I absolutely love shots in this show, in particular one like this where it's just the creepy doll by itself watching Dorothy on the news here. And she even alluded to she wanted to have Jericho hear this wherever he is. And if this doll is really the Jericho that gets revived, that's pretty cool. They line that up. And yeah, the TV turns on on its own. You could think Sean just had the recording set to go or that Leanne's got something supernatural going on where she timed it because we know Leanne was clearly watching this broadcast like Dorothy knew she would. And that's why Leanne calls in the end. But you see character growth in one scene in line with Dorothy and Sean here where Dorothy's like, after doing what she did on the news, putting out any help to find Leanne, she knows she did not do a good job on that desk, was risking her job. And we know Dorothy's always been super career focused and passionate about that. But her growth is that here she's like, okay with sacrificing that for her child. Smiles even saying like, I don't think they'll be asking me on the desk anytime soon, but she's not like crushed by it. And same with Sean's growth, cause he's like, you did what any good mother would do, where Sean from last season would yell at this woman about that. So I like that we're seeing these transformations of our characters. An important line she says too, is my stomach is settled, I think he's sleeping. And this could explain why when Leanne's doing all this crazy stuff at the end, she's causing like the floors cracking and the water going in the shower. And that's why we wouldn't maybe hear the baby crying if it's there. I really love how they did this scene. And when Sean's like, where are you Leanne? And she's like, why haven't you told her what she did? So I was jonesing to get some Leanne action going and they, I think they got it right at the right time here where we missed her character. We wonder what she's up to and now she gets this nice little return. And they hint at Leanne being in the house too because there's this spy shot we see of Dorothy in the shower from someone's point of view. Again, that could just be an objective shot, but it could also be subjective from Leanne. So it's lending a theory, whatever's happening, Leanne is causing the cracks in the floor and this water to go on its own. Does she do this from afar, some kind of voodoo from wherever she is, or is she somewhere near this house? And is she reviving this doll still, or is there a separate baby that always has been this new Jericho and that she has this baby. Who really knows? But it's a really exciting cliffhanger now with Leanne coming into the fold and starting to mess with them. I'm gonna give this episode an 8.7. I think it was really well done with a strong end. I don't know how much new we learned though about Julian. So maybe that kind of brought to a slow feeling here where we already know Julian's a skeptic and is a non-believer and is always the one trying to bring people back to science-based thinking and realistic thinking. So it did feel a little bit fillerish there where it's just trying to make a theme for the episode, but also kind of stretch out the story. So I don't think it's the greatest episode, but I do think it's still really solid and I'm excited now to see what's gonna happen next. Let me know your thoughts down below. I read every comment. I try to respond as many as I can. Let's get the discussion going here. Please, if you like what I do here, I just ask for a $2 monthly donation. You can commit to it with a PayPal link down below. It will help me be able to do more videos for you guys and cover more shows. I'd be super grateful. And please follow me at Steve Varley Show on Twitter and Instagram for more of me. And I'll see you next time.